Hi, I'm Chris, a voice actor, and this is my third compilation video of speeches taken from the Warhammer 40k universe. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank everybody who views my content for their support and also for their patience, because obviously I only upload regularly on the shorts, and then every time that I can justify one of these compilation videos, I post them. I also wanted to just give you a quick heads up about some 40k related news pertaining to me. The first being that I was fortunate enough to be cast in Rogue Trader 40k, the new video game from Alcat Games, where I play Heinrich van Kellox, one of the companions that you can also romance. And the second thing is that my second title for Black Library will be coming out towards the beginning of 2024. Also from next year, I'm going to be starting a Patreon membership and also a YouTube membership where I'll be able to do more behind the scenes content and also some longer reads, including from 40k source material. I completely appreciate that most people that view my content and probably are not in a position to actually monetarily support it. So I'll be continuing to do the 40K content and regularly post five videos a week on the shorts and still have these compilation videos. But I just wanted to give you a heads up about that in case you're interested. My last thing in this quick intro is just to say that if you do have any other suggestions for future material that you would like me to perform or at least attempt to tackle, then by all means do email me at tiktokspeeches at gmail.com and do send me as much information about those extracts as possible so that I can find them easily and they will be considered and if I think I can add something to them then I will perform them. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Please do like, subscribe, spread the word, share and all that good stuff and enjoy. All dead. My brothers. My sisters. I swore I'd stand with them. We would die together. My life has never seen such fighters, Lorgar. Clester riding her shriek spear. Jakura with his strangling chains. Asti. Little Asti, stealing knives to throw and cut and stab, while his grin warmed the cold night. Larbadon, who lost his arm to gangrene, shouting for the High Riders to follow if they dared. Well, he had my back, as I had his. We'd slip on the gore together, grinding the fallen beneath our boots. Words don't do them justice. We came from the Red Sands, growing in the filth, eating the shit the High Riders fed us. But we broke free. Thousands, Lorga, thousands of us! We were free, and we lived and laughed, and we made the bastards pay! The nails hurt. Oh, how they hurt even then. But we made the High Riders and their paper skin kin guard pay. My brothers. My sisters. Slaves. Or oh. pit fighting slaves. Our lives were mud to the High Riders that held chains around our throats, but our masters paid. Oh, how they paid. This world burned when we broke free. It burned! I promise you that. The war dragged on. Season after season, city after city, the rivers ran red with High Rider blood. We fought, we fought everywhere, I swear it. The High Riders charged our shield wall at Falca. They charged us. Their lordings demanded it of them, and they rose to the bait. I can still hear the thunder of both lines meeting. Can you hear it? Do you hear the thunder? But we fled when the seasons turned. We had to run into the mountains, to the ridges, to survive the winter. 
Too many High Rider armies were coming for us, with their lasers and grenades and machine guns rattling all day and every night. I swore I'd die with my brothers and sisters in the mountains. We were free! It was our death! The death we earned! The death we wanted! We laughed and called them closer. High Rider bastards! Come and die, dogs of Deshia! I am Angron of the pits, born in blood, raised in the dark, and I will die free! Come, watch me fight one last time. Is that not what you want? Is that not what you have always wanted? Come closer, you dog-blooded cowards! And then... Then, the Emperor, the Emperor, he stole me, trapped me, banished me to the Conqueror's dark belly, teleported me up into orbit, though at the time I knew nothing of such technology. I was alone, alone in the dark, and my brothers and sisters died here. They died without me. I swore. We all swore. We swore to stand and fight and die together. I will wear the red, the brass, the bronze. Fresh from the armory and turned by my own hand, though I am no devourer. I spit on the Rugar and all the rest. Our Primarch is a newborn creature of the warp, a prince of blood. He needs no protection that legionaries can offer. Rather, I am sanctified in the colors that are said to most please our new god. But I will not lose myself. 23. Many of my brothers have followed my example, even as they follow me now on the field of war. The brain fire keeps our blood hot. With every swing of our blades, we anoint the icy ground before us. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. We will walk the Eightfold Path. We will wear the mantle of Kaidira Remissium, even though the Primarch forbade it. We will rebel, just as he rebelled. We will kill, not because we are ordered to, but because we live for it. Blood and pain and nothing more. 26. This last edition is the purest form of worship I can imagine, glowing bright and crimson in the corner of my visor display. It is a calming counterpoint to the nail's fierce tick, tick, tick. Velkerdan knows me well indeed. 27. A tally. A measure of my skill and a tether for my soul. The others may do as they wish, but I will not lose myself. 28. I will not become like our Primarch. 29. 30. 31. There is no brotherly contest of old. These are my offerings to the Blood God. By the count of their skulls will I prove my worth, for they are all I have to offer in place of my own before each new battle's ending. The Kelly, Horgan Prime, the Brosk, and all three of its moons. Stenir, the orbital cities over Polyax. Another world whose name I forget. 
Neep 4, Neep 2, Deluge, and on and on to the hallowed throne world itself. 32, 33, 34, 35. My father's name is Angron. That is all that he has left. We have only Logar to thank for that. And one day, we will. This is the end. All that could have been done has been done. Every delay, every counter-strike, every anticipation. Now, they get in. Mercury will fail imminently, then exultant, then the others, faster than we might have hoped. Not as fast as we might have feared. Soon the shape of the battle will change. We will be like dogs in the rubble, scrapping over every habitation. The reserves are ready. You have their coordinates, they have their orders. I will return to Bab. Communications are collapsing and the Sanctum must remain operational. You, though. I remember your ambition. To be here, whatever the cost. It has all come to pass, I suppose. Just as the Remembrance Girl told you it would. Coincidence. Oh, I have to believe it. So many wars. So much blood spilt, all to reach the point that she foresaw from the start. I gave you hell for it then, but the new doctrines must give way to the old, it seems, and we can worry about what that means if any of us get out of this alive. So the discipline is ended. The leash is off. March out. Take the wall defences, take the reserves and rally them. They will be blind and deaf out there, and so will need a leader. I set you free, my beloved. My best son. Do now what you were made to do. Hurt them. Only a true god would deny his divinity. Well, that is the great delusion. The one that lies at the heart of that book. And that delusion was mine. I was the one who contorted reason to produce that lie. I was the one who needed it to be true, or else all my beliefs would collapse into ruin, as will yours. These followers of this cult, they will defy us unto death, that is their nature. In small numbers they are helpless, but in large enough gatherings they will be a threat. Oh, belief is contagious. But given a chance this cult would have spread over worlds and beyond. Kalia Veston and all her kind must be exterminated. But here is the paradox. Though these people will die for the Emperor, though they will fight us to their final breath, they also represent the end of the Emperor's dream. They are what he tried to destroy on Monarchia. They are everything the Imperial Creed stands against. The Emperor's most devout followers will, if they can, be the ruin of his hopes, and their holy book is my doing. I hear, at least, I have destroyed what I have created, what I once sought most fervently to create. I echo my father's actions, and the ironies compound. The contradictions seem irresolvable. I must make war on a religion whose foundations I have laid and whose followers reverently mouth my words. There is no space now for me to untangle these paradoxes. 
The urgencies of war will not allow it. But I will learn the full meaning of this mystery. If I have to extinguish life from the galaxy to carve out that time, then I will. If I have to wait until eternity passes before I can mediate on the full meaning of what has transpired, then I will. But I will understand. I will know revelation. When the Necrontyr shed flesh and left death for lesser creatures, we thought only of freedom from fear and making kingdoms that would never die. We did not think of what else immortality would entail. We thought in terms of wars, of destruction, of conquest. But eternity also requires what you would call entertainment. For my part, I find infinity allows me to observe the myriad ways in which matter and consciousness manifest. I collect them. Objects, life forms, moments. This is one of my favorites. A device that can create roads under the skin of reality worth risking anything for. But nothing compared to what it has brought me. This moment is locked in a tesseract labyrinth. A pocket of space where events play out again and again. Where sometimes you reach this moment first. Sometimes others do. Each instance is different, in countless beautiful ways. Free you. <laughs> oh, you can free yourselves. All you need to do to leave the labyrinth is never enter. You're given that choice each time. Oh, I am not your jailer, my wonderful relic of mortal pride. You. Your own prisoners. The look on your faces is my favorite part. And I have enjoyed it a thousand times already. The Emperor is a liar. You have all been deceived. He has lived among you for thousands of years, biding his time, using your ancestors as he uses you now. Well, the Emperor speaks of unity. The Emperor speaks of the protection of the species. The Emperor speaks of the furtherance of mankind. Well, the Emperor speaks of many things. And all he says is lies. Know this, people of Tanner. He is false. The War Master, Great Horus, has seen through his deceit and commands me to relay to you the truth of the Emperor's ambition. The Emperor is a parasite. He uses your sacrifices to raise himself up in the war. Your blood and your souls are his meat and drink. He wages a campaign to challenge the pantheon of true deities. Listen to me, misguided, abused children of terror. Let it be known to you that the Emperor desires only apotheosis. He will become a god and supplant the gods of war, life, pleasure and knowledge. He would transcend this plane of existence and abandon you all to the monsters he pledged to rid you from. It is he who is the traitor to the species, not Horus. Horus will save you. Well, look to the sky and see his fleets. Witness how many others have seen reality for what it is, unclouded by lies and wishful thinking. Know that the coming of Horus is the coming of truth. He is the chosen of the gods, the powers in the warp, who have watched over humanity for time immemorial until, to their dismay, the Emperor barred them from their worshippers. He has seen the gods' glory and serves them willingly. He does not wish to supplant them. 
He does not spoon-feed you pleasant fantasies. He is not a lying tyrant. He, Horus Lupercal, is the savior of mankind. I am a prophet of the gods. I am Horus' servant. And I say to you, rejoice. The gods are coming here, to this world. They will bestow their power and their wisdom to any person strong and faithful enough to take it. Look upon me and witness one of their champions. I swear to you that they will treat mercifully those who turn their backs upon the false emperor. They will be kind to those who kneel to the righteous powers of this universe. This is my pledge. You will survive. You will prosper. You will know mastery of this realm and glory in the next. This is their compact with me and through me with you. As I come to you with these joyous tidings, I must also convey a warning. If you do not embrace the true faith, if you do not acknowledge the true gods, if you do not pay obeisance to Korn, god of war, to Nurgle, god of endless life, to Zintish, god of knowledge, and to Slanesh, god of pleasure, then you will be slain by them and their servants, and your souls will be cast into the warp, there to be devoured. Only then, in the life that comes after this, as surely as night follows day, will you know the magnitude of your mistake. There you will see through the Emperor's tissue of lies in despair. In the warp, you will beg without hope for the chance to change your actions. There is but one choice. This is the end. Grovel before the gods and beg for their mercy. Now is the time. Now is the moment. The way is clear. The doors open. Turn on the slaves of the false emperor. Repent before it is too late. And liberate yourselves from his tyranny. Zog me! This won't do! This won't do! What are you doing? You twos are never going to be proper boys with fighting the likes of Gibbert here. Proper orcs have proper enemies. You need to get big and strong. Orcs get big and strong by beating the best, not by fighting crots. Even if you is going to eat them. Enemies like biggies. Well, yeah, biggies is well hard, but I ain't talking about beaky tin boys. Pointies is weak, but they is fast and well stabby, but I ain't talking about them either. You want a proper enemy, like what the prophet himself has got. Listen here, yous. We run herds of all the best stories. I'm going to tell you about God's call. I'm going to tell you about... Old Baylor! Yeah, that's right. Baylor, the meanest orc killer of them all. A homie? No, 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 no. Not just a homie. Garrick, Old Baylor, the greatest foe of the great Gazkul Mac Orox Thracker. The beast of Armageddon. The conqueror of Messina, Golgotha, and lots of other places besides. The great prophet. The big green. The gobbiest gop. The stabbiest stabber. The fightiest, hardiest warlord that has ever been, ever. And that uh, is a very long time. Only if you become a warlord like him can you get an enemy as good as old Baylor. Well, he has got an eye that will burn a hole in you. A claw that will rip you in half. Though he's a skinny run, he carries a gun what is so big and so heavy, only beakies have him. Oh, I reckon you can carry it between you. But he waves it about like an itty bitty squig. And he rides a battle wagon so big and so shooty, a hundred flash kids couldn't take it down. Even without all that, oh, he's well fierce. Gaskell nearly had the whole lot before Garrick stops him. 
So if you want to get big and be proper orcs with a proper enemy, you have to go and pick on something a bit meaner than little Gibbet here. I near the top. The light around me. My lord and master moves. He steps down to me and offers me his hand in support. That hand. That great and capable hand that has held the galaxy in its palm. I feel him close. To my surprise, he permits me to share the private working of his mind. The signs I read there are clear. Don't be sad, I say. This is more painful than he expected it to be. He is afraid he will never speak to me again, that there will be no more hours spent exchanging thoughts and words configuring mankind's best fate. His memories are Antarctic bright. The day he first showed me the throne and told me what it did, the shining look of disbelief in my eyes, the evening when we both realized that I could moderate its functions too, that my mind, like his, had the capacity to engage with it and not instantly perish. That night when we concluded, through plain logical deduction, that there might come a day when I would have to take his place, that in almost every configuration of the future we could model, someone would have to do it. I was not afraid. Not then. Not now. I knew what that would mean. I brushed it off as a, a thing that would have to happen if it came to it. He hoped it never would, because he knew what it would mean too. And for the longest time it seemed unlikely. He had built a contingency to avoid it ever becoming compulsory. The contingency's name was Magnus. Now the time is here. I do not hesitate. I take the hand he offers to steady me, and I ascend the final steps to the throne. I give him a nod and a little smile, and I whisper to him, do not mourn in a voice no one else can hear. And then I prepare to take my seat. There is nothing else to say. After centuries of conversation in which we have dissected and shared everything, there is nothing left to say. Just a look from one friend to another, an unspoken understanding of everything that has passed between us and the debts we owe each other. This act is my final everlasting gift to mankind, to the future, to the plan painted on the wall. But in his eyes, I can tell he knows that I am only really doing it for him. The greatest, most universal acts are always born from the personal. I am old. I am tired. I sit upon the golden throne. Sanguinius, what transpires on the surface of the throne world, I cannot say. What horrors you have endured, I cannot imagine. All I know for certain is this. I am mere days from the system's edge, and within a solar week I will be in the skies above Terra. With me, I bring the entire might of the 13th Legion, and I am not alone. Word has reached me from Ross and the Lion at the vanguard of the 6th and the 1st. Our numbers are enough to cleanse the heavens and tear the world from the arch-traitor's grip. Hold on to hope, brother. That is all I ask. Can you give me that? Can you stand your ground for these last ultimate hours? Those elusive twins. Victory and vengeance are coming. This war ends the moment I reach terror. 
Hold. In the name of the Emperor and the Imperium we have built together. I will be with you soon. You have brought the Emperor face to face with chaos first found. Closer than when he sat upon the throne, or walked the shrieking halls of the webway. Perhaps closer even than when he last faced the four and took their fire from them on the Molech. You have brought chaos to his very door and forced him to look it in the eye. Do not, then, expect him not to use it. I see him look down at his hands. They are sheathed in oramite because it is almost quantum inert and thus most efficacious in the manipulation of immaterial forces. Bare skin is better. This much he knows. He tears his right gauntlet off, hangs it from his harness, and seizes the immaterium with bare hand and a bared mind. It is scalding and alive with anger. But my lord is no longer constrained by the constant duties of the throne. That is my burden now. There is no time. There are no clocks. There is no pain. My master hears only the crackle of the wall. I watch as he harnesses that sound and uses it as a focus, a drishti, to regulate his work. The immaterial presses at him. It seeks to overwhelm and drain him, but he understands its fire. It is the same fire he stole from the four annihilators and used to keep them at bay. The same fire he has wielded for centuries to drive them back whenever they have come too close. They flinch then from their own fire. They flinch now. You have forced this confrontation first found. You have brought my lord into a realm of chaos to face you. Did you think that would weaken him and grind him down? How can he grow weak when there is limitless power around him to draw upon? You do not put out a fire by throwing fuel upon it. Oh, he draws upon your flames. Over the millennia, he has worn many masks, each suitable to the task at hand. His mind, his greatest gift, allows him flexibility in such things. Now you see him at his truest aspect. As terrible as he can be when terror is the only recourse. He is Ordo Abkeo. He is Lux in Tenebris. The Emperor lights up your pitiful, wretched ruin of a ship. He turns back your perfidious darkness. He empowers his ailing companions and rekindles their courage. He shares his searing mind sight with them, banishing the false heavens and murderous paradises you conjured to drown them. He sharpens their senses and edges of their blades. He fires the cryptochromes in their eyes, the retinal proteins he wove into their construction that lets them read magnetic fields and allows them to see the actual physical structure of this place behind the congealing lies and illusions. He boosts their data-depleted senses and banishes the cognitive dissonance created by the isotopic space around them. They drive forward, smashing through the demon's ergumenical mass possessed by will and power and abraactive fire. The decks shudder as infamous beasts collapse and die or stagger, howling back into the shadows, trailing blood or mauled limbs. Horned things, tusked things, insectile horrors come apart under raining blows and roaring shells, deliquiscing into slicks of antithoracrous sludge or spattering the walls and floors with sizzling iron-thine blood. 
My master begins his vastation, advancing blow by blow and death by death into the dark heart of your lair, searing away the evils that you throw at him, edging ever closer to your abditory, your inner sanctum. Your attempts to stop your father have forced his hand obliging him to become stronger, to reject notions of mercy, to adopt the aspect I hoped he would never have to wear. I am reluctant to admit it, but this pleases me. I am almost delighted to have lived just long enough to see his ultimate fury unleashed. The things he slays, dead or undead or never born, incinerate in outrage at the power he is wielding. They see him for what he is first found. They see him in the aspect you have forced him to assume. Emperor. Master of mankind. Sanitizer of demons, annihilator of the annihilators, bearer of stolen fire, death bringer to the false and pitiful four. He is here, first found, in rage, in extremity, in theandric fury. He is here, and he is coming for you, with all of the vengeance and malice you are owed. No more restraint. His reluctance is gone. He will take great pleasure in obliterating you. For I hear his mind ringing through the wall. I am here, Horus Lupercal. And for you, I am the end and the death. We are like echoes in a cave, or waves upon the water, performing our part every time we are called. We, who have glimpsed into the flow of time, see that it is exactly such a vast confluence, paths uncrossed and recrossed. All are swept along, and we Eldar, masters of hindsight, insight, and foresight, are bound that much more tightly to our duty than the ignorant, the belligerent, the blind. When one truly understands fate as it is, myriad branching paths, then one can truly see that duty is cleaving to a particular fate, and glory is the accomplishment of duty's end. When we are true to the nature of the Eldar, we cannot fail. Picture a vast prison warship filled with frightened, angry psychers who can't control their abilities, and who have just lost their homes and their families. Well, some of them were children and adolescents like I was. Some were monstrous creatures who no longer had the right to be called human, or psychopaths who reveled in their impure powers. Whenever one of the miscreants broke free, those in command simply depressurized the bay and got rid of the culprit, along with the prisoners and crew tainted by him. But even after that, I heard the echo of inhuman suffering and terror that filled that part of the void ship. It grieves me to recall that episode to this day. Well, since you're in no hurry to kill me, I infer that you serve the Emperor, not his enemies. Allow me to introduce myself. Interrogator Heinrichs van Kallox of the Imperial Inquisition's Holy Ordo Xenos. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? <laughs> <laughs>